I'll do that right now. All right, thank you. Okay, so starting now. So we're gonna talk. My name is Jorge Mendes, and I'm gonna talk about chapter 10, Function Factories, the basic part. I actually divide the chapter differently from the book because I thought the book was very confused. Not confusing, but it's what it was like, oh, a function factor is a factor that makes one is a function that makes other functions. But then it's starting attack talking a lot about environments in the in the entire the chapter began began it transforming the I mean a chapter about environments, environments part two. So I'll just talk I first talk about the uh, function factory kind of fundamentals. What is a function factor is some example of some examples in GDP2, laser laser evaluation in functions. And part two is the weird stuff that it's basically environments, because environments are the worst. And so I'll talk about them later. So we start about what what is a function factory? A function factory is a function that makes functions. So you enter like a vector or a character and you go and you get X function. Uh, they are possible because our functions are also objects, which I don't know. It's like there are also objects, but we usually don't use them as objects. Like there are also objects in theory, but I think the idea of using them of, uh, as objects is not so easy to grasp. And I think it's one of the things that this uh, chapter made me realize that they, it could be powerful, like to, to thinking functions as also as objects, as things that you can call. So, okay, I just an uh, example about the book that we have uh, uh, power functions. It just like we have x and the power is to x, exp. So, if we use power one with two, we will create a function square, and you can call it square three, it's nine, and you can create a, a function cube, cube, cube three, 27, a simple, mathemat simple mathematical functions. So, fun function factors, they are used a lot in the tidyverse. Some, example, some examples from the book and from the tidyverse are x scale, scale. The scale packages is like a, de a dependence from ggplot, so you use it, you use it like to format format the labels of just graphs. So you have num use the function number format format. It will format it to return a function, and this function it will transform this vector in the another character vector with these specifications. Like we have one, two, three, four, five, but now it will be scale to one. You it will like lose three dimensions, and you have the suffix k, twenty twelve k, one two three k, one two three four one two three five k. I think uh, I think uh, one thing I thought was weird about the Tideverse it was like if you go to some functions it it, it was always like oh you can accept this argument can accept a character or a function. Like it's used in ggplot, for example, if data could be a function, you can pass data as a, a data data frame, or you could pass data as a function, which you look for a data frame and make some transformation to it. So I thought it was very weird. I like, I like this case factor a lot, but I think it was weird that it returns a function. But a function factor is, it, I think it kind of makes sense now. They're like, Functions are also objects. You can make your code depending on functions, depending depend on um, receive functions and make things with the functions. So I think that is big sense like to have the function factor like scale with ggplot because ggplot accept, accept functions a lot as arguments. And other one was just save. I use this function factory to go from file extension to the device. For example, if you use plot dev PDF, it will give the exact function in graphical device that works with PDF. I actually put this one here because I think the code is very neat. 
like some nice code. If I do, if I did this, I did much worse, much, much worse, a lot, a lot of ifs. So I just think that it, it is an example that function factors can make the codes look better is using the switch and the function factor. And so I think the first but uh, like function factors are nice, but you have to be careful with the evaluation in R. So it can cause bugs in function factors. Well, if we, I have x is two, if I call square power, square power one of x, I would expect square two to square square two to be four. Like two is two power two is four, but it's actually eight because x is only evaluated when the square is called. Like x is not evaluated here because it's an argument and arguments in R are lazily evaluated. So they are only evaluated when the function is called. If the value of x, since the value of x changed, the value of x, x, b inside square also changed. It can be solved with the force. You can force the evaluation of the argument. So when the, the argument, when the argument is inside the, the function, the value won't change. It's just like, okay, it's just like, oh, function facts are good, but there is also this to look for. And function factors might plus functionals, which was kind of named of the book, like kind of an appendix. But it's pretty simple, like he creates a list of names of, of possible functions. If I want to create a function square with two, root with 0.5, cube root 0.3, uh, 0.333. So I create a function funds. But I map the power function to all these names. And I can access all the functions inside funds in the list. But this syntax is not very good. We have always to use the dollar sign to call it. And just showing that if I call the function with the dollar sign, if I call with the dollar sign, I'll have the function. With the exp, how the function was defined in here, and the environment. There are some options to work around it. We have with. Error can access the value directly, but it just happens inside with. Like if you work outside the function with, you don't have this behavior. So that's not outside of it. You can have attach. You can attach, do your work, and then attach. And you can use link bind. That will bind all the all the names in the uh, all the names in funds to the global environment. And then you can unbind unbind later. In the book, he said that in Vine will, will make its coming back in uh, chapter 19. And that was the nice, the good stuff. Now we have the weird stuff there. It's the environment of the manufacturer functions. First, uh, we, have, we know that uh, this is a quote from the book. The enclosed environment of a manufacturer functions is an executing environment of the function factor. Which means that manufacturing fun functions, their environments are weirder, weirder than they are already weird environments for normal functions. So functions usually have the global environment if we make all the package name spacing as its environment. Like if we create a function, the global environment is its uh, env functional environment. And if, uh, that means like if we create a function in a global, we create a function, it will look for stuff in the global environment. And the function a package, its environment, the namespace, so it will look for stuff in the namespace. But each environment, each manufacturer function uh, gets its own environment from the function factory. So it will start looking at things in this environment. I'll go, I'll talk about this in the, in the second part. And to go through this, we'll go back to power. We have power, function, x, add, x, and we have two manufacturer functions, square and cube. First, we'll look at the functions. If you see how the function is printed, it's not very good because, like, no square is 
x power is less. So if we don't know what s means, if we don't know its values. So from here we know that they are both have different environments. The number, the address is not the same, but we don't know where they look for s. Like s, it just happens. So now we look at, at their environments within print. We look again that they have the same bindings. bindings. They have the name of S, yes, EXP, EXP here and here, which is lazily binding. You show here. That's just a promise. That's like it's just a dream. It just dreams of being something. And we have error, we have the function environments here. With the fun with the functional environments, we can get the value the values of exp. Exp in square is two, and exp in cube is three. So it rains then and get the values. So this is the thing about the function manufacturer values. When the function is created, the an envir an environment will be created for them, and in this environment, they will look for their values. So a lot of you could do some things with it, and that's, but first, let me just show the diagram. You have a square, it's a name in the global environment. A square is a function that only has, has x as argument, and the, and the function has one environment. The environment is exp. So exp has a value two here, and here we have this, the environment that looks the same but it's not the same. It's just like it has the same bindings, exp, where if a different values in a different memory, memory address. Now, it, now I talk about some things that derive from the behavior of a manufactured functions that they enclose their environment. First is that the environments can be useful to make some, some part of the computation once. Like you can do a computation once and do a, every time you call the function, this part of the computation is already done. You don't have to do it again. Uh, Hadley uses a bootstrap, a model bootstrap, like he run a model and he removes the model object because the model will not be needed again. And then the function will, will release a, boots, a bootstrap of the, of the results. I have defeated, but the residual. And yes, you can call it a lot of times. Each time you call it the same point, of course, we have a different C and then we get different values. But the, fun but the important part is that the LM will, will only be run once. It will only run, run LM when Bootsim Chikashu is created. Like, and all the other times you just run the parts inside the function. Like the function factories kind of have two, two parts. They have the, in, the parts in the function factory that is actually, that you can think like of the environment, like everything that is here will be in the environment of the manufacturer functions. Like everything that is here will stay in memory. And you have the second part that the part that is the like the instructions of the function, the part the part that will be read every time the function is called. So if you put things here, you put things that will only run once, so you you want to persist. And here you put the things that are fleeting, they're like in the execution environment that you just do once things like then you snap, and there is no function again. I'm sorry, I. I still just have a tr I have trouble like understanding how this works. What's the difference between it being written like this and removing the function above and below that? Just just returning fitted plus sample red ID. Sorry, I did not return it. What would I don't know? Is someone else? Because, <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh no, sorry. Can you, I, I, yeah, I, 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 I just don't question. understand why um, the function call is required. Like, why isn't it just mod is that stuff fitted, is that, you know, then remove oh, mod, oh, okay. it, plus sample. Oh yeah, it's because the, 
you want like bootstraps. Every time you want to, you have you want to call it every time, like you want to get a, a small portion of the fitted per sample every time you run the function. Like every time you run the function, you get different results because of the sample, but you don't have to run that lima again. Yeah. Like it would get you the same result, but or the same type of process, but it wouldn't get you the same result because it's a random sample, but it gave you the same type of process. Like it's identical code in that sense, but the fitted model part only gets run once in the function factory uh, case. Yeah. Yes, it's like you don't know you you run you run a dice here, and here you build the dice, and he and here you just run it. I think it's kind of like the idea of bootstrap. You you boot something, you you build a data set, and then you run it a lot of times, but you just like get a subset with different results. It's just like I would it be the same as just using set seed. Instead of putting in the function. For more the difficult models, or you may not have a deterministic model, right? Like LM may be different each time, so your fits could be slightly different too. Um, yes. Like if it was a different if it was a different model, so your bootstrapping would be different in both the fitted part and the sample part if you rerun it. Maybe yes. setting C would solve that problem, but. Yeah, but I also think the main point though is that the. The, the 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 running of the fitting of the model doesn't have to be done every time. Yeah, yeah, you I think it's more for speed purposes. For speed, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yes. I think this is what, as weird as Lingo. I never heard of the this kind of modeling but but stripe. Like you do a model, then you but stripe the results of the model. I've never heard of it. I tried to come up with a better example, but I could not. The thing that uh, I think was was hard for me with like before this example, uh, with this chapter in general, was like that it seems like a lot of the examples could just be done with specifying creating a function with two arguments. Like like they yes. would like yeah. have a first layer that took one argument and then would create a function yes. yeah. based on that argument. But I'm like like until this, I didn't get why that was useful. Like. Because in the other examples, I think that you could accomplish the same thing by creating a generic function that creates two ar that yeah, yeah. takes two arguments, you know, or however many. Um, anyway, that, that's just I thought the examples, a lot of the examples, are helpful for understanding what function factories were, but not necessarily for um, just showing their usefulness. You know. Yes. Yeah, I got. I got a lot. I get some of this too because other they only seem to be useful in some like if you want to plot a mathematical function, this could be useful. If you have an optimization problem, this could be useful. There's in too specific and too math related. I don't know. I think I tried to come up with better examples, but if, I don't know if the time I couldn't do it. It it kind of rem like this kind of reminds me of uh, in um uh. I actually haven't done this in R, but with like Python, when you're using like something like scikit-learn, where you, you have like a, a object creator and that object that you create for to, to, to then to later fit data on takes certain per parameters to like initialize it. Um, and so to me, this like first layer, inner layer, or the, sorry, the most outer layer is like kind of that initialization and then you can like, in, and then it's in like the Python scikit learn case, you're like then taking that object and like fitting and predicting off of it with cer certain parameters that you use every time for that object. Um, yeah. I don't know. That's just kind of like how I started thinking about this this type of example here. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I think it looks like the object oriented programming from Python, but it's just weirder. Like. The object oriented programming is like more straightforward. I think it's more easy to understand. This just look weird and with the environments and with changing environments. I mean, it's obviously, obviously useful and the code is much smaller 
I saw some examples comparing the two functional programming of object-oriented programming. And usually function programming has smaller code and sometimes it's easier to change, but it's confusing to understand it. It's very hard to find useful examples. Examples when you have to use a function factor is very hard to find. But I'll go. I'll talk speed. This usually is done for speed because, like they said, you use the you just run the default ones. You just run the LM ones. So when you call this, it will be, it will be faster. And but it has the downside that everything that is here will still be here, like we create a functions x and m, and a function factor that calls m. If you you create a function with a very, with a really small number, like with a, oh, I have some, I think one billion, one billion object in Ornif, the all, all of these will stay in memory. It will stay in, in the enclosing environment of G1. So if you got the object size G1, it's large. And if we have the same function, but we remove x, that is the large vector, we have a very, we have a very smaller object. So yes, you, it's you, functional factors. It's useful because the function is you create. They can keep stuff. You can keep stuff in them, but it might be bad if this stuff is too big. You have to explicitly remove them. It's not like regular functions when the execution environment is splitting and it, the, it takes care of itself. Like the, you don't have to call the garbage environment. And the last thing that I think is that the book calls is the stateful functions that, can, that they have the super assignment operator that it's it assigns the assigns the thing to the parent environment. Like if I use a, if I use the super assignment here, it will assign the value to the pre, to the parent environment. That is this one. Usually they're not useful in regular functions. If you're using a regular function, you just change a value in your global environment, and usually you don't do that like a function to explicitly change your values in the global environment. But in the stateful functions, since their environment, their environment is enclosed, they, you actually change the values in their own environment. And I forgot to put the full example. So okay, if you count, count, say if you have counter one, counter two, every time you count the counter, it will change the value of i in one for their own function. Since each one of them has their own enclosing environment. It will only change what I in their own environment. And the headless test use the inf moderation because you have multiple states, you should switch to R6. I think slide can said this looks like object oriented programming, so it's like more confusing with uh, function factors, so we have to do it uh, multiple times. It isn't very useful. So is then we have some questions. Thank you. Anyone any questions? Uh, thank you. Okay. Um, I, in the exercises in the book, um, I'd like to know. Uh, so in section ten point two point six. Uh, there's a uh, an exercise create a function pick. Um, it takes yeah. an index i as an argument and returns a function. Uh, I'd like to know uh, did anyone solve that? I, I got a partial solution, but I think not a full solution. I'd be curious to know how other people attack that one. Yeah, I think I did this, but I don't remember how. 
Yeah, I have one. I have it in front of me on the uh, how what I did. I don't know if this is what you're supposed to do, but uh, can you show us? Yeah, I'll start sharing. Yeah. So not SC red. An SC red would be a calling of SC color with the input being red. Yeah. So like this outer layer, you wouldn't have a hard coded red there. It would be whatever the input is to the function. Yeah. I don't know what that means. What? Like, like so, so that would have. Um, um, so I think what you're saying is it would be SC color. color. Yeah. And then that would just be hue. Like you just, if you get rid of the red part. Yeah. I think if you, if you left in red, then that would be a def default, but it wouldn't be hard coded. I think you could overwrite that. Yeah, I've been, I thought that this is something that could be simplified. Um, I think I have to do not have to pass along the dot, 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 so, or that's just going to oh, go. Yeah. You have to pass the dot 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 to your inner function because that's what's being returned, though, right? Right. In all three spots. I'm not sure about the first one, but definitely in the. Sorry, uh, yeah, that one for sure. I'm not sure about the 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 one on the outer function. Yeah, I think he's saying the opposite. Reverse the dots. Oh, sorry. Well, actually, I think we just made this harder than we had to anyway, because we're because st red is a function now, right? Like when you run sc color, it's going to return. Um, it's going to return a function that runs simple colors, sc within with hue, as it. So I don't think you need the outer function on this. I don't know if a function factory actually makes it easier. Okay. Yeah, I mean, the way that it's written is just, yeah, without these guys. Wait, but why doesn't this do what you want it to do? Wait, so SC red. Like if you run that, that probably does SC red, right? Um, so, so this will return a vector, or it should, uh, let's see. And are there other inputs though? So that's so what you're trying to do is you're trying to, it's the dot, dot, dots that are important. Is, is that what I'm missing? Uh, sorry, let me, um, there's defaults on SC within. Maybe not. Maybe it does require. Well, I have to think about what's going on there. Um, yeah. <laughs> no idea. Yeah, I think you could use it if you were trying to pass multiple secondary variables to it, right? In SC within. And like it was always going to be red. So like you were just going to say SC red was the hue and then everything else was could be changed. Yeah. Yeah, I, I was hoping that this would, because all of them have light of defaulted to 2.5, all of them have a saturation that is uh, like a blank character. Um, and all of them have return equals null. It would be nice if it could just be like SC color red, SC color orange, and make this a lot less code. Um, I think that would work from what you had before, like in the in our studio. I think it's just this: the we, there's something going on with the arguments that you have to. I think what might be going on. Okay. So 
maybe this uh, hanging column. <laughs> I don't know if that was doing it. Yeah, but I'm and not sure. I think you. Uh, can't you just create an object like SC within default? And like in all functions, you just call SC within default in change who? What was the last part? Like, I mean, you're, you're calling SC within every type of function, but I don't think you need a function factor. I think you need like an object. I find an SC within with the defaults. So just call this object. Okay. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm having a hard time understanding when I would use it and when I wouldn't. Um, I'm gonna stop sharing. The other thing, Jake, I was thinking with your code that you showed with the function factory idea, you could also do what Hadley did towards the end of the chapter. If you had a list of colors and that function factory, you could map the list to the function factory and create a bunch of functions from a list of colors. You know. And, and Kevin, that leads me to my question, which is if you're doing that, would there be a an iterative way to create the function names? So I think that I can't. That'd be fine if it was local just to my environment and, and running code, but I don't think you can package it that way. Okay. But I'm not positive. Let me see. I asked it on Stack Overflow and someone was like, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know anything about packages. So. Uh. Yeah, let me see if I can find that. Like you might be able to, like what he was showing after that is you could attach the list of functions to the environment. So maybe you could do it that way. I don't know, like our environment bind. Well, yeah, certainly on like a local R session, but not. Um, package. Like if that was in a package, it wouldn't work. Yeah, because you can't you can't write to the user's environment to to like populate them. Uh, guys, I'm going to excuse myself because we have the statistics uh, uh, book club in 10 minutes and I wanted to get something done before that starts at 730. I'll probably see a couple of you there anyway. So uh, uh, thank you, Jorge. Thank you. I'll put this uh, in the chat, the Stack Overflow. Or the first comment is the seems more bad practice than it's like. <laughs> this is you asking the question. Yeah. <laughs> I've heard Stack Overflow was a. Uh... A bit mean. Now I see what, <laughs> I see what they mean. In general, like I've had good experiences on Stack Overflow, but I think um, I've definitely gotten myself into some areas that I don't know aren't as common. So I think for like the common like how do you use that stuff, uh, pretty pretty good. But you know when I start getting into like trying to get into the guts of the user's code and doing all this other stuff, people start telling me like. Oh, you're building something out of duct tape, or like that's a bad. Practice. I don't know. It gets a little, a little, a little nice. a tough, tough crowd. Yeah, um, but but I'm also like 
maybe some gatekeeping maybe or that maybe some gatekeeping's going on there. Yeah. I'm just smarty pants. Well I think it's like the the thing I'm trying to do is like definitely more complex and so folks who are able to answer have more nuanced understanding around like how R should function function and how it um like affects the user's environment and stuff. And so I think that they're just aware of like more probably better practices that could be I just like don't know what this thing is. Well you're a good sport, man. It's good that you can take that stuff with a grain of salt. And so Jake, in this stack overflow example, you're so you're creating so when you when you try to pass letters, um you're saying that every single time it's it, I like I isn't changing in each for each letter. Uh, I think that was my problem, but also I wanted, yeah, I'm working on a package and want to make some functions that return very similar results. So I was having two issues. One, they kept returning um, C. They all kept returning C, which I think um, I kind of understand based on the chapter. Um, but then I was also asking, like, how do I get all of these into the user's environment? And then it was like, don't do that. <laughs> Somewhere in there it says that. Um, basically, storing colors as a list. Okay. Uh, yeah, the very first comment is the one that says um, the code would need to be executed to create the functions, and then they would be created in the user's environment, not the package namespace, meaning they couldn't be used inside the package. It would overwrite any functions the user already had that happened to have the same name. And actually, Slickway would be something uh, to use functionals. So, yeah. So it's like they would run it and yeah. accidentally overwrite stuff they had if you like named one of those functions some instead of having some, it would just be like whatever you had made the function to be, but they wouldn't know they'd overwritten it. Correct. Yeah. Which could be an awesome, terrible, terrible package. Like if you just had it like overwrite all of everyone's base functions which is slightly. Well, I think if it, so it would have to assign it and when it assign it, it, it would show up in their environments. So I thought it was, yeah. If but I mean, if you, can you turn those off in your, in your function? So it doesn't uh, like, so it runs invisibly without giving the warning. Is that how invisible works? Uh, it might be. I feel like there's a way that you could like it, it, you change some to be some plus like some almost like floating point error amount of randomness on purpose. And you could put that somewhere in the R for data science book. Like, oh, if you want to, you know, torture your coworkers, you can add this little snippet, um, and it will add random numbers at random times. Um, that does not sound like a nice person's thing to do. I know, I was surprised you mentioned it. Um. Uh, yeah, I don't know enough pack, enough of to tell you why or um, how you could assign it only into the environment space that you wanted. So I don't know if we have a good solution for you. It's OK. Um, I mean, the solution I have seems to work. But the other thing, and maybe this is, there's a, a a group talking about package development right now on Tuesdays, which I'm also going to. Um, but I also don't really know how to pass the documentation around. So if they all have like similar names to get, you know, the little help, you know, when you like hover next to the, the function name, you'll say, oh, these are the inputs you can put in. Or if you hit tab, it'll like start populating those. Um, it seems hard to get that to work um, without explicitly like naming all of the the inputs each time. So I can save that for the Tuesday crowd, but if anyone knows. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. Sorry, Jake, I was just fooling around with that example in Stack Overflow. You got me thinking. You get an answer? 
Um, here, I was trying to think about that first, that first comment on, uh, one second. like something like this. Uh, oops. I think when he was talking about functionals, like, uh, so using math and understand. like, oh yeah, sorry, I didn't mean to. Uh, Yeah, so like something like this, where a return letter, uh, here, I messed up though. Um, uh, uh, sorry, what did you want to do again with this? <laughs> Create a function. What were you returning in your original example, my bad. Um, He's creating functions in the environment. It'll return ABC. Ideally, but they're returning C every time it looks like. So there was like a paste. So the map was pasting function dash. So we could we could like skip the for loop and just like assign directly like what fn one and fn two are, where we default it to the letter A, B, and C. Um, I don't think you can map unless I'm wrong over an assign, but maybe, maybe you can. Right, sorry. So uh, uh, I think in this sign you have to tell it that the environment is the global environment. Is it? Okay, all right, sorry. So just, I'm just, just trying one thing here. I was thinking his uh, for loop was in the function. I misread that whole thing. So you're saying, Jay, you're saying that you have to, you have to do what? Um, in a sign, you have to tell it, uh, there's an environment argument, and you have to tell it to oh, oh. when it assigns to go to the global environment. Otherwise, it'll just assign it inside the function environment. I'm so surprised I didn't even know that that's like a, a sentence I can say. <laughs> like I didn't know. So what's the, couple. sorry, what's the argument called? Uh, oh, environment, this one here? Mm -hmm. Like that? Yeah. And you can just say. And you have to assign it to the global environment, right? Because the, it's going to default to the environment's made in the map. So. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, I have to switch that. The, I yeah. have map and switch them there. Like that, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then FN1. That, yeah. Okay. So, how would you do it if you were using the function factory, just saying like FN1 is uh, return letter one, return letter two, return letter three. Um, yeah, you take the assign out, right? And then you would just be, you can take the assign part off and you just function letters I, right? That's gonna make a, that's gonna make the factory. And then if you just run that, not in the map, but run fn1 equals that one, right? That's the different version. Sorry, Jack, can you say that again? So do, just do like fn1 a test should have a, sign. That should have three, three, um, three um, functions inside, right? Mm -hmm. So if you put test and then dollar sign fn1 I don't think that um, well i think you can it. say fn1 is uh return letter one let me just do this clear my environment again sorry and then i wouldn't uh, run test i would just uh assign fn1 without a map or anything just like a, oh, I see. a different line I don't think FN1 exists anywhere yet. Right, so we're going to make it. So FN1 and then the arrow yeah. return. Yeah. Yeah. Like this, you mean? Yeah, so 
is that now a function? And then mm -hmm. if you do yeah. FN1, cool. Now, if you go back to that other one, the test will should have been a list of three functions, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Actually, that was the only application I thought is I, I do run something where I was creating a ton of functions that would only be called in certain circumstances. Like um, they were like, it depended on variables within a data set, which function would be called. Um, and uh, that actually was, this was like an application I thought this might be creating lists of functions in a better way than I currently am, which is with for loops, so. yeah. Or actually, with with L applies. So, I just want to see, did this work too? If you did uh, map letters, return a letter, or that, and then did. Uh, I wouldn't name it letters. Well, I guess you can, because letters is like also the thing inside. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Uh, uh, like function names or something. Or uh, yeah, names. I don't know if you want to re remove letters or not. I guess we'll see. OK. So I think this so that works too, I guess, right? Like then I have FN1 as one function in that. Now it's not in the global environment, but uh, funds FN1, funds FN2. All right, everyone, I got to run over to this other uh, club. Thanks very much, Jorge. Thanks, Jorge. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Have a good night. Thanks. Yeah. You too. Bye. But Jake, that was kind of what you were saying, right? Or... Um, yeah. Do you want to try to get it working with my example or just call it a night? Which, which one? The, the oh, color yeah. one or the? Yeah. Sure, I, I could stick around for a second and work through it. Uh, yeah, we don't have to spend a lot of time on it. Um, I think if you stop sharing. But, you, but weren't you saying though, part of the problem too is like now, even if you have this funds, uh, like list of functions that you couldn't, like that in an R package, you can't do um, uh, yeah, no, uh, whatever it's to, called. You'd still have to individually assign them. Um, right. It just wouldn't, I just, you can't just do bind yeah. less code. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, I think uh, screen I can share. Sure, sure. Um. Also, thanks for uh, setting all this up. Oh, yeah. I don't, I mean, I don't feel like I do much, but uh, at least I forgot to ask again for people to present next week. I'll do that later. Yeah. No, it's fun. It's fun. I like this. Do you, do you know about um, creating hidden functions? Nope. <laughs> yeah, I just started um, in my R profile. Uh, I have, I'm actually not going to open it up because there's a lot of API keys, but um, I created all these little functions in my R profile, and then I have a function to tell me what functions I had. Um, but so if I hit like, if I type dot, so like a big one is um, like tibbles. So if I do MPG, it'll just show me this many rows, but sometimes I want to see everything. Um, and then I don't want to type quite as much. Oh, of course I don't have to fight. Yeah. But then, so like dot print will like, dot print is really just like uh, mm. this, but I just don't always remember. And I don't always want to type it out because usually I just need it real quick and then I'm going to delete it. Um, so you can like make little functions like that in your profile and then they are available. Well, you can make it anywhere you want, but the dot functions don't end up in your global environment. Um, like so in that, this case, is that. this case, in this case is, um. Sorry, let me see if I'm, I'm make sure I'm not recording. Am I still recording?